Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid, and it's turn 64, I think? Is that right? 64, yes. Uh, and this is going to be an exciting episode, guys. This is going to be the main war with man. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to have some cool battles. Um, there's going to be lots of cool raiding. Um, the diplomacy's kind of turned against us a bit as we're now... Um, basically, we're going to be getting two and a half v one I think they've also declared war against Ulm, but they don't really border Ulm. And Arco, I think, has only declared war on me. I don't know. I think they... I don't know. It, basically, Ulm is kind of weaseled out of this. Um, not weaseled. He's been honorable about it all. But he hasn't really been the, the target of the, the ire of the Arithia Arco position. And they're kind of... Uh, they're kind of in axis, like they're kind of allied together, right? Like they're they're working in tandem on multiple things now, right? So that's like a very clear pattern. It's like, okay, these guys are working together. Uh, you know, they bullied uh, Arco together, and now they're... Or not Arco, they bullied Caleb together, and now they're bullying us. Um, and Ulm and I haven't worked together before. We worked together a little bit against Vettiheim. But we haven't really been working in super close cahoots, but we've been very friendly with each other. Um, and we're kind of strategic allies in terms of where we're located on the map, too. Whereas Arithia and Arco are actually, they have a really long border. Um, so anyway, it's kind of interesting. Um, but they're, they're not really the top position in the game. So it kind of makes sense for them to work together to try to notch up their position some. Um, <clears throat> We cast Stream of Hades. I actually really like this spell. Um, we can also twice... Um, let's see if we're doing it. We can also twice born the... Um, are we doing it? No. You can twice born these. Um, and they'll come back as a... Give you a second run. Um, yeah. So uh, let's get on and see what happened. Uh, I think this is my Har Harmonica Golem. And this might be a Pokemon Golem. Oh, it's a Pokemon Golem. Sweet. All right, so this is a Pokemon Golem. We have uh, a Lantern Shield. We have a Returning Mechanism, which in this case is the Armor of Virtue. Uh, what's nice about putting this on versus like a Ring of Returning is um, we get... It frees up a Miscellaneous slot, and there's no Pokemon chest items that I can think of. But there are good Pokemon... And these are artifacts. This is like an entire... <laughs> you know, one, two... There's three artifact Golem. <clears throat> Um, so we get Artemum's Soul Trap, and that gives you um, two of these mages, who are actually pretty solid. Um, their, their paths are random that you get every time, or every combat. Um, and then we got this guy, which gives you uh, the Pocket Lich. Um, and this guy's a Death 5 little floating head, basically. And um, yeah, so we actually got a fair number of mages present. Um, you can also do, uh, this works really well with a, uh, lifelong protection. So you'd have to swap out one of these. There's a lot of ways to do Pokemon Golems. Um, but this is a fun one. So the Lich is making a bunch of stuff. These guys are casting Solar Rays, Pillar of Fire. And before you know it, our Long Dead has made it back. And sniped those guys. So a very low risk uh, ra counter raid from us. As we these guys had had raided us last turn. This was the uh, Iron Warriors um, Iron Will Lich Magister combo that was so cool. Uh, we also have access to Ghost Riders, so we send that here. Snipe these guys, and we're gonna take it with a warrior or with the werewolf. But he sent a warrior mage who killed us. So. Uh, he kind of outrated us there. And then uh, we sent some horrors, because we've got Gift of Kurgi, I think. We sent some horrors somewhere. Didn't really do much. Uh, kind of bad horror roll. These are not really usually the best horrors, but... Uh, found a Magic Sight, an Enchanted Tomb, plus one Death Gems. Um, and uh, we get the battles. I'm going to do them from the report here, because I don't want to ruin anything. Uh, this is just a ping. Uh, this looks like we're taking... I didn't show you last turn, but we're on the Patala throne. Or we, we sent orders to attack. This is us moving on top of it. Uh, we do want to get this stormed before the battle with Arco breaks out. Uh, assuming they respect the nap. 
Uh, we don't want to have our stuff sitting there wide in, like out in the open for him to just fuck with on top of the Patala Fort. So we're trying to, and and we definitely don't want. I think it's kind of in the interest of everybody in the game that we get this fort quickly, because if Arco were to fuck with my army and weaken it, but not able to like take it himself with an extremely dominant army, we're again opening up things towards a Kalem throne rush. Um, so I'm going to do my part and try to take this before the nap ticks down with Arco. Um, battle here in the Mercs. Summon some air elementals who land right in front of my Saramancers, uh, but not quite on top of them. Still managed to trample them for a round, it looks like. Um, fortunately, we held, but sort of barely. Or not Saramancers, Reborn. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's good we held. So, you know, these are important things in, in the raiding war, how these little things go. So he had done... What was this guy? A Phantasmal Warrior Caster to, to sort of slow down and tie up the front, and then uh, and then he had an Elemental Caster that was supposed to do most of the work. If this sniped my commanders, it would have. There's a pretty good chance it did, too. I think if you run this battle a few times, we probably lose it at least half the time. Um, but we had a pretty good setup. Swarm is pretty good for distracting air elementals and stuff. Um, and so is Skelly Spam if you can do enough of it. Um, if he had two air elemental casters, I think it would have worked for sure. Uh, okay, we've got another battle here. This was where we were trying to pick off that province the, um, the Ghost Riders hit. Uh, Kalem is now storming Patala, so Kalem is now fully ready to go, and we have these unsupported armies. Uh, people, apparently, I haven't seen it. Every time I've seen a Kalem army, I was asking people, like, what's going on? Does Kalem not know that mages exist? can't be the case because he's number one in research he has the most mages of anyone um people have confirmed he does have mages and they're decked out in like temp gym items and stuff so they can't be gym baited and they've got all like they're it's kind of like the golden armada of mages right they've got everything is perfect and all the things but he's not using them in these fights because Kalem patala doesn't have anything in there i'm like okay there's a lot of trust involved here <laughs> Like I say, I never do that. I'm like, I'll waste some mage turns just in case somebody tries to screw me over here. Okay, we get a, a big battle here. So man has ridden, if you remember, man had that army in the middle fort, and we had two forts that we'd kind of forked off of him. So he had to choose which way to go, and he went diagonal right down. Um, and this is our army. So we've got the, I think this is Ayala. Yeah, Ayala. Um... Golem, Fairy Queen, a uh, bunch of cool stuff here on our side, and a ton of worms. And Man has a bunch of Magisters, each of them with, um, a, it looks like a, a Warden Bodyguard. Um, I can't tell, we'll see what they're all scripted to do. He's also got a Contingent of Cubes. These are going to be really good against uh, worms. They're one of the best worm counters. Um, yeah. But you want to do things like get MR on them, uh, up their protection, a bunch of other things. But the nice thing is they can trample worms. Uh, worms are only size 3. Um, and trample doesn't trigger blood vengeance. So that's kind of the main thing here. You know, the acid uh, splash is pretty nice as well. But the main thing is you're trampling. Um, and then green lions are also, these are super elite troops. These are like 3 gems per. They used to be, I think, 2 gems per and a great value. Now they're expensive, but probably still worth it in many cases. Um, yeah, it's a good troop. Uh, and then he's got some whites here as well. Um, so yeah, this is... I think this is a very good army. Um, I was probably expecting a little bit more, and I think he would benefit from twice as much of everything for having to fight this army. But it's a tall order, because he's also fighting Ulm. So... There's a lot of crossbow bolts coming back here, and that may hit some of our mages. Okay, we have Aerofin go up, and I don't think we lost any... Yeah, we haven't lost any commanders yet, which is good, because that first crossbow volley is actually pretty dangerous. 
Um, you can see some of the blood vengeance shooting back at the crossbows as the worms are hit. And we've now got fog warriors up. Um, I believe Wailing Winds is his. He's got a Lich that has cast it. Let's see if we can find it. This Lich. Uh, Spittle. It's got pretty intense gear on him as well. So, uh, Wailing Winds is up. Now, that isn't going to have too big of an effect on me. It does affect my lizard mages, so it's very likely, like, these guys run. But if you recall, most of my important mages, the ones casting important spells like Rigor Mortis, they're white mages. White mages have very good morale, so they're not very likely to run. Um, I could have further stacked morale gear on them, but uh, we haven't so far. Darkness is up now, um, and he has cast Firestorm. Um, and I do not have fire resistance, uh, nor do I have, like, you know, any of the army of whatever spells. So we're actually going to be taking a lot of damage. The problem casting Firestorm is I have Blood Vengeance. Um, now, this is the point where if I had, like, a Tomb Chariot army, um, I would be really riding the struggle bus. Um, but let's see who cast it. I think this guy did. Sure looks like it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cast Firestorm right here. So uh, he's fatigued out. He's got, you can see they've stacked as much MR gear on him as they can, and they put Regen on him. Um, and it looks like they've also buffed the army with Regen. So this guy's, this is what you want to do. 20% uh, 20 re, 20 Regen, stacking MR to the moon, and try to throw up Firestorm. This is a great idea. This chassis is a little weak, though. I think I don't think that it could be done. You could do it with a, probably a King of Fire Elementals, but those are unique and expensive and hard to summon. Um, or you could do it with a Tart, I think. Um, this chassis I don't think is strong enough, even with this much MR and uh, regen. But this is that is a good idea. The other thing is we can kind of just regen through a lot of the damage. From Firestorm, like Firestorm is significant, but we have 10 natural protection, which is something. Uh, and we have a lot of regen. Uh, it is not going to be terribly kind to our, our normal mages. Uh, his cubes have mass flight and have, uh, have now landed amongst us. And they are squishing things like crazy. Um, we are going to attack them, which is nice, but uh, ultimately troublesome. Um, they're converting some of our worms, though our worms do have pretty sick MR at 19. Um, Rigor Mortis is also probably starting to set in. Okay, it's still got a while. It's turn 6, and they're only at like 30 fatigue. Uh, archers tend, strangely, to do better against Rigor, because uh, shooting doesn't seem to cost fatigue. Uh, which is... Not something people who do archery will tell you. It's very strenuous trying to pull a pull a bow. Um, Gifts of Heaven coming down, striking our worms. But uh, our worms have flanked, and if you'll notice, they have made it now into the back line. And they are going to come through here and envelop and chew through the mage core. Um, the other thing is Firestorm is down, and there was a chance just due to positioning we killed him with the worms, which I think would have happened. Um, we'll go ahead and watch this again. I think it was this one. Um, we'll just watch this guy real quick until we catch up. There goes Firestorm. See, a 10. So that's the thing. You have to resist the MR. You have to use the MR to resist the Blood Vengeance, but then you also have to hope you don't get a, like, a lethal amount of damage, because it's, it's a pretty... Once you failed the MR check, you can get some big damage rolls coming through. And here he got hit for 15. And in some ways, it's just a matter of time. So you need actually a pretty big hit point pool in addition to regen to like survive it for a long time. Like You really do need 50-something hit points. So that was how Firestorm went down. And then our guys are back here. They're starting to envelop. Our front line is kind of getting blown up. Um, we're doing pretty good fighting these guys, but they have a tremendous amount of protection. Um, you see it's a little bit of a slap fight in the front. 
Though we do occasionally get a kill. Um, and time is on our side. Not only because we're flanking the back and killing the mages, but also rigor mortis is slowly setting in. Um, and these guys' stats in the dark are kind of garbage. They actually... This is like one of the few times our defense actually can work some at defense of four. Uh, that can actually work a few times against attack seven. Um, but we're certainly going to be attacking every time at 19 versus uh, 10. And this includes the, the shield parry. Um, we would really benefit here from uh, weapons of sharpness. That would be amazing. But now their army is fully enveloped. We're working against the last of the Mage Corps, and Rigor is certainly setting in now. 59 fatigue, 75, 96. Everybody's pretty high, and even if you're not at 100, you're still getting pretty big stat penalties at 60. And there's just too many worms. There's too many worms. Man did a lot of things right. Um, I think the the Firestorm was a little wishful thinking. I don't think if you ran this many times it would work. Um, I don't know if they tested it or not. I'd be really interested. Um, it's possible without Fog Warriors and stuff this would have worked a lot better. Because if you think about it, um, if they don't, if they want the battle to be kind of quick, even if Firestorm goes down, if it kills or damages or helps to just end the battle quickly, it could be worth it. Um, <clears throat> and without Fog Warriors, it's possible this would have, uh, on our side, it's possible it would have lasted, uh, or it would, like the, the main melee part of it would have been a lot quicker. So, as you can see, these guys with mass regen, and look how tanky these guys are. Mass regen, army of gold, and with will of fates, uh, and then resistances, they're very hard to kill. And they've also got pretty good MR. Um, yeah. So yeah, our worms here showing that while they may not be master of anything, um, they are very versatile. And that like they're very hard to deal with efficiently. So man brought a pretty good army. I think he, if he had twice as much stuff, I'm pretty sure he would have won this. Um, I don't think just having a King of Flames, like if they were able to keep Firestorm up, I don't think that in and of itself would have been enough to swing it. It would have done a lot more damage, but I don't think it would have swung it. Um, but yeah, we lose 150 worms. In exchange, we kill 19 out of the 21 Magister Arcanes. Uh, we kill three Adepts of the Golden Order, uh, a Flame Spirit, an Ivy King, a Lich, uh, and... Uh, about 110 Tower Guard, 10 Green Lions, and 14 Cubes, and 23 Banes. So, a pretty solid showing uh, by man, a very well-scripted army, uh, and a fun battle to watch. Uh, ultimately went our way. Um, I think without the Queen of Storms, there's a decent chance we would have lost so much it would have looked like a loss, even if we won. Like, I think it would have been kind of mutual destruction, um, yeah, it's kind of my thinking. So that was the battle in Silbermark. Um, we're then going to have a battle in the Fort of Silbermark, because we're scripted to Storm. And we still have a pretty big crew of lizards that, uh, you know, the nice thing about having beefy commanders, it's our Tomb Kings, which are pretty hard to kill. So they're very likely to survive a, a, an important battle. So we Storm Silbermark. Uh, this is our little gem farm with Ulm. Uh, we have a battle in Mir. What were they casting? What was that? Oh god. Turn one Banefire is so intense. And that was like, that was these, I think it was this guy. Yeah. Um, there might be one more up front. But yeah, I forward positioned a few guys to just do turn one Banefire. It can really just mess up a lot of little fuckery plays. Um, yeah, it's pretty intense. 
It's quite a long range spell, and it's a huge amount of area of effect one armor negating damage. Uh, so that was Mir. There's a battle in the fortress of Pastinia. And so I think this is the little palisade. Well, what is this? There's a golem inside. Oh my god. Dimensional rod. This must be a doom caster, right? Oh, solar brilliance. Interesting. It's gonna blind all my guys. Fortunately. Oh, that is interesting. So blind for a while and then returning. We have pretty good MR. We got a couple guys blinded though, for sure. Yeah, fortunately, it doesn't actually do that much to us. Uh, we're kind of, it, it, in some ways, it lets us get repelled better, which is kind of good for us. Uh, and our attack skill is actually really good. It's good enough that even with blind, we're still going to be hitting things a lot of the time, um, especially in the darkness. So we're not actually that hamstrung by it, um, strangely enough. <clears throat> so that was a cool thing, just kind of blinding my guys. Um, I thought it was going to be Doom, but yeah, this was taking up the, the fort that we were just talking about with Silvermark. Uh, Ulm is attacking man. So this is the kind of army Ulm is rolling with. He's got a bunch of these uh, Black Templar. He's got a boatload of crystal geared uh, illuminated ones. A big pile of Zweihanders. And some ghoul guardians at the front with these big magic weapon black halberds. Uh, backed up by a small contingent of about 15 to 20 uh, storm demons. And he's got Father Ill Earth to do big earth magic. And <clears throat> some, um, some rangers that are positioned in the forward... Uh, corners to help snipe mages. So this is going to be interesting. Let's see what man does here. Pretty sure I saw Wind of Death come out. I think that was... Let's watch that again here. Pretty sure that was the Lich. Because I do remember man having a Lich. With returning gear, yep, this is a Wind of Death casting Lich. Man has a lot of cool tools they've uh, they've built up. So man's like, hope you like Wind of Death. And uh, you can see there's a fair amount of decaying going on. So Ulm gets, this is a fort battle, right? So Ulm gets a fort out of this, but it cost him some rangers. Um, <clears throat> they did turn into soulless, which actually are not worthless. They're, they're okay siege defense and siege chaff. They're not really siege defense, but... They're good siege chaff. He got a couple soulless mages, which can be nice if uh, you know astral corruption or something were to go up. Um, he lost a fair number of Zweihanders. The mages did much better, just because they have better base MR. But he lost a couple of those too. So yeah, that's how that uh, shook out. We didn't see another battle in Warshin, did we? No. Um, we have a battle in the fortress of Mir. Where you watch this? No. This is the throne. And this one man has left basically undefended. No little surprises for me or anything. And this was basically the fork, right? So man got to choose where to send his army. Uh, he sent it to Sibylmark, which we won, but at some pretty in, uh, significant cost. Um, and then Mir was basically given to us for free. Um, and there's a battle here in Tinver. Where man is taking this fort from Patala. He's got an air elemental engine. Doesn't send more than he needs here. This is a very efficient fort storming. Um, yeah. So pretty good turn for us. Um, the significance of this is we already had more armies on this front than man did. Um, and so man losing this army here means that he's basically not going to be able to defend his whole southern part of his border. So um, we have a border agreement drawn up with Ulm, and I think we get like this. Maybe, or like this. Something like that. So we're going to be able to get our stuff pretty quickly here, um, and we'll be ready by the time the, the nap ticks down to fight um, Arco and Arithia. 
So that's interesting. Um, and I believe we've got one more turn to wait here before this army uh, can storm this fort. Uh, and we're also a little bit paranoid that Patala or uh, Pangea might attack us here. So we've got a decent amount of mage support. Uh, this is the difference between Caleb and I. And Kaelin would probably be like, oh, people have told me I can take it. We're just going to send in the troops. I'm like, nope, we've got mages. They're scripted to cast spells. Um, Arco's starting to build up stuff on our border as well. See a big army here, big army here, um, big army here. So there's going to be plenty of stuff for me to fight. Arithia not showing similar buildups. Most of his forts are like back here, so I don't really see his uh, launching point for an invasion. But nothing on the border so far. Um, we are starting to send some scouts to get them back here so that we can kind of see what's going on. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably it. And we're at 25 minutes, so I guess this will be a single turn episode. So uh, hope you're enjoying the series so far. Uh, and I hope you're uh, excited that this uh, these wars here are picking up. Uh, and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.